Andrew, you were a uh, worker uh, for several decades back in what people might call the olden times, what our students might consider the ancient past. But uh, and so you were working in starting. You start off as a switchboard operator and worked your way up into management Correct. at the phone company. Correct. And so you dealt with a lot of. So now in the, in the current press and all this kind of stuff, we're hearing a lot about people's inappropriate uh, treatment of women and all that kind of stuff in the workplace. So, so what's your perspective? Firstly, what's your perspective on that whole? that whole thing that's unfolding now. I totally believe that it's um, an issue and that it's been going on for years and years and years, which doesn't make it all right. But um, I did experience it myself, and especially as a young woman in my 20s and a divorcee. Um, <laughs> they thought, hey, this is free game. And um, people that found out after I was divorced, that I was single, that were married, and all men, of course, um, would con call me up for lunch, and I knew their wives and everything, and then they'd, they'd say, well, I can get you a promotion, you know, if we go to lunch, and that type of thing. Um, and then there was a time when uh, one fella offered me a position, because he had a, an open position, and it was an advancement for me. And he said, well, we'll check into this motel first. I said, sorry, I don't do that. <laughs> and then another issue was um, one of my bosses that I really, really admired, a division level, um, went out for martinis for lunch one day and came back and then physically um, texted me inappropriately. And my first thought was, if I say something, I'm like a peon and he's a big guy, they're not going to believe me. So I didn't pursue it. In today's world, well, I would one, they wouldn't believe you, and then two, you're worried about retaliation? Both, yes. Yes, both. I, I totally believe they wouldn't believe me. And secondly, I figured, you know, something else would happen. And I did have a situation that was not sexual har harassment or anything like that, but it was inequality mm -hmm. pay. Mm -hmm. And when I did pursue that, um, they handed me a check for you know, restitution and then said, you will be starting another job next Monday. <laughs> because my boss was afraid that I was a threat to the organization, which was so far from being the truth. That so, so what... So when this when all this stuff was happening, mm -hmm. um, would you talk to your your colleagues about no, the goings I, on? I actually told no one. Why? Uh, probably a s several reasons. Um, one, well, when that particular fella touched me inappropriately. The thing that was disheartening is I really, really respected him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a super intelligent leader, and and he always treated me extremely fair, pay-wise and all that. And it was an isolated situation, but I totally avoided him from that point on. Right. You know. Um, and the reason why I didn't tell anyone, I guess, because I, I don't know. I didn't want people... I didn't want it to backfire on me, I guess, right, and I right, guess right, I was right. chicken. And because I was a single mom, I needed my job. And that was probably the utmost right, importance. Right, right, right. So, so... I mean, I'm embarrassed about that now because today I would not do that. But then I was young and, you know... So, did you ever talk to your colleagues at some point about about guys in the office or, or, or no, certain things? I never did. And a couple of gals told me situations that they had run into, but I had, I never talked about my situation. So how do you see it? So um, so un totally understandably afraid for your position, afraid for your yeah. income when you're sort of you know fiscally tenuous and mm -hmm. don't want to screw that up and that kind of stuff. But um, what about would you see? Would you see men doing things that you couldn't do as well? And, 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 and so one, one is like the notion of you getting punished for, for 
bringing stuff up, but would you also see inequality in terms of how guys were treated, in terms of the management? Oh, oh, and, oh yeah, definitely. So, so say, tell some examples of that. Definitely. Um, well, as an, an example of that is um, my first probably three managerial positions, I replaced men. And the pri you know, prior job was held by a man. And they gave me far less pay and lesser title when I took over each of those positions. And how did you how did you know that you were getting lesser pay? Because it was it was well known what the salary of the guys were. Okay. And um, and it was always a percentage of you know what their past was, and, mm -hmm. and then you know you got a certain percent increase that type of thing. And then um, at one point I had a district manager that really um, was interested in in my work, not me. And he said, you know, I've handed out checks to other women for far less than this. Have you ever replaced a man and been paid less and lesser title? And I said, every single job I've had is manager. And he said, then I think you have a case. You need to contact HR. And so he told me who to contact, and I did. And they investigated, and they talked to these, these guys that I had previously worked with this group. And they said, did Kathy do the same work as you? And they said, she trained us. <laughs> and he goes, it was the easiest case he ever had. So they, The HR guy said it was the easiest case he ever had. You know, as, as far as proving. Right. Proof. And so then they, they, you know, in a few weeks, they handed me a check and for back pay and increased my title to the same as the guys. And what year was that? That was in the 70s, let's say. That was... Yeah, that was probably like 79. So you've been working there like 20 years-ish or so, 15, uh, 20 I, years? Well, I was there 10 years when I had you, so I was there so like... So 19, 20 yeah, years, 20 years, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then um, and, and then they moved me to another group the next week, which turned out in my case to be a better move because I really liked the other group better. <laughs> But, I mean, it was so obvious that the guy was afraid that I was a troublemaker. And I thought, it's so stupid. But um, I'm trying to think what other situations I have had. What about, what about, um, so, so you started working in the 60s. Correct. And then, and you went, you know, for many decades working with the same company, which is unusual. Most of our students probably won't do that now, but, right. but so what... Short of getting some redress for some of the uh, inequality, what 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 generally changed over those say four decades? Uh, well, actually, in the, over, in the corporate world that you saw, so this is San Francisco, Northern California, right. supposedly very liberal, supposedly very forward right. thinking, all that kind of stuff. Well, what I did see is that women were finally promoted to different positions where there weren't women before. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually gave... Now, was this a gradual so thing or was, was there a, a big... It was a gradual thing. Yeah. And of course there were also lawsuits and stuff like that, you know, in various fields. But um, yeah, and, and there was definitely a transition to show that women were, you know, equal. Right. competent, right. They really weren't equal, but it looked like they were equal. <laughs> And, um, and then, so eventually, so easy, then said, eventually, I think that passed. You say they weren't equal. They weren't equal. They weren't equal pay wise. They weren't equal responsibility equal, wise. Yeah, pay wise and res yeah responsibility positions. Yeah, like vice president that type of thing. Yeah. And um, not always the best got promoted <laughs> for various reasons, but um, yeah. But women did get promoted eventually. And so things are better now. I believe they're better now, yeah. So it's telling yes. that you say, you didn't say yes. It's telling that you said, I believe they're better. So Well, because I'm not in that field anymore. So, sure. But yeah. from what we've seen with all, with, you know, in politics, with the president situation, Hollywood, news media, all these revelations, um, when you read those stories about guys, mostly guys, mostly behaving towards women, um, does that ring totally true to you? Did, can you see that happen? Did you see that stuff I happening? Totally, I totally believe it's true um, as far as, uh, but in certain industries, I think it's far more right. prevalent than, right, right, than right. it is 
and um, yeah, I, I do believe it happens, and I do believe that people are afraid to say something. I For think, the same reason that I live. Sure, and I, th I think that's worse, like you said, I think that's yeah. worse when the power dynamic is the greatest. So when, right. when the boss is an older, you know, higher up, and you're the young and you're the you're the brand new uh, right. person. You get on the block, yeah. Right. So so as you as you aged, right, society was changing, the company and stuff was changing, but you also were be you yourself were becoming more of the higher up person. Correct. Right. Yes. So so did you see that becoming less and less because of? Do you see the harassment stuff becoming less because of? the culture broader changing or because you were now more powerful and it was harder for folks to it do that? It was probably a combination of both because, you know, I felt more secure and um, more sure of myself right. and more confident. Right. And so I think it's a combination of both things. And um, I wasn't like super, super high up in management, you know, right. I, I mean, I had a good job and stuff. And the thing is, I really enjoyed my work. so. You know, that's another part of the equation. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think things have changed, but I, I think they haven't changed in some respects as well. Uh, yeah, well the pattern seems to be some people, at least of the current situation that's, that's uh, capturing public attention now, it seems to be some people are the victim of some kind of inappropriateness, whatever that may be. And some just leave the industry. So, some some bail from the company, some bail from the industry, right. and just do something different. Others, um, like you're saying, because they because they love their job or they want to do the the job, they you know kind of more be quiet or don't try to rock the boat because of the exact same thing. So what would be yours? So if there was a young, so you might not know about the news media or the movie industry, or, but so if, if there was a young lady that came like a friend of yours or something that came to talk to you and she was in the, 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 the phone industry, so your industry, so something you knew about. And she said, hey, this guy came and was a total jerk to me and touched me and whatever. What would, you, what would your suggestion to that young lady today be? To pursue his, for him to have consequences. You know, really. And, um, you know, whatever the, whatever the reason, it's not right. So, um, yeah, I would definitely encourage that person to seek professional help. One of the things that I would say a lot of my, my former students that have experienced this say is even though they know, again, it's mostly guys doing this to mostly young ladies. But there are some women. That, right, uh, right, right, right. But also guys and stuff too. But, 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 um, they say even when they know that this person is being inappropriate to them and, and you know whatever level that might be um, and they push back which I'm very proud that they push back they still tell me that they feel slimy that they feel icky that, that they, they were feel, the ones that did the wrong thing right? yeah or, 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 or just if not the wrong thing they, they feel they feel tainted by the entirety of the experience even though they might have done nothing wrong and they might have said, you know, back off, stop doing this, this is baloney or whatever. Right. right. So, so would you say you identify with that notion of feeling that, that yes. like negativity and all yeah, that jazz? Right. You do feel slimy. And, um, and it's like, it, and at first your first thing is it's my fault. Right. But then you realize it's not your fault. You know, but... Um, and I didn't try to bring any of that, you know, I wasn't like a slinky dresser or something. You right, know what I mean? right, right. But, um, yeah. Not that that justifies anything. No, it but, doesn't justify but, anything, but right. you know what I'm saying. Right, 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 right. Sometimes right. that encourages the wrong thing. Yeah, and it, it seems like it's this thing that we've been living with for a long, long time, millennia, and it's baloney. And it seems like hopefully now with the, with the current... Uh, broader revelations and broader uh, information and stuff that hopefully things will change for the better. Mm -hmm. But I think people have to be, you know, honest with themselves, wide-eyed, and that th th there are there are still unfortunately uh, the things that you worried about might happen. 
And I think our students need to know, they need to have the confidence in themselves that if this is a place that somebody's pulling that kind of stuff on you, you probably don't want to be working there. Or at least if the, at least if the place doesn't deal with that responsibly, yeah. that's not probably the kind of place that's good for you right. in your career. Right. And I know how scary that can be, again, especially when these guys are just starting out, they just you know they just need to make rent payment and right. and all this and that and they're, they're doing maybe a dream job or something they've really wanted to do and how hard that can be but but at least so far all the people I know that have that have said stop that that's baloney or this is gross or knock it off whatever the whatever the pathway um, they've all ended up on their feet fine mm -hmm. even yeah. though at times it seems like you're gonna, it's not gonna go happen. down the rabbit hole or whatever yeah, yeah. That's true, yeah. Okay. Any, any other last pieces of advice or last recollections about this craziness of, of sexual harassment in the workplace? Well, uh, sometimes there's things that happen that are totally untrue and unfounded. Right. And, uh, for example, I had a trip to Alaska, and it was a business trip, and this gentleman from one company picked me up at the airport, and his wife found out that a single woman from... San Francisco was coming up to visit for a meeting <laughs> and she went ballistic and I mean like there was no reason for it but because I was a female and she <laughs> right. was not right. there she was totally threatened by me and I thought it was so unfair because there was no reason for it you know I believe that's why the vice president never has dinner with people when his women when his wife isn't present to avoid such worries <laughs> that's right <laughs> I mean, it was like, I was so shocked. I thought, when I found out about it, the lady that, whose house I was at said um, that the woman called her. And I went, really? Why? And she said, well, because you're a woman from San Francisco. You must have been one some of untoward those. something, right? Yeah. It must have been one of those. But, yeah. And I, you know, that, and there was total innocence, you know. It was like, really? And that was like in 2000, you know, that was like the late 90, 1990s, so, you know, it wasn't like the 70s or something like that. <laughs> right, right. But it was also Alaska, so. <laughs> Which is kind of like the 70s. Alaska in the 90s is kind of like California in the 70s. Because the first bit. time I went up there to do a, lot a meeting, of bell -bottoms I wore stuff. a suit and they said, next time don't go wearing those fancy things. And all the women had on, you know, uh, plaid shoes. Shirts <laughs> and vests and, and boots, right? <laughs> and but not not knee length boots, but hiking right, boots, right? Right, right. Cool. All right. Well, thank okay. you, dear. You are thank very you welcome. for uh, persevering through all the silly uh, silly experience experiences. Life. All to be a good mom. I'll give you a hug. Oh, thanks, mom. Oh, what a good mom. <laughs> Somebody survived the horrible <laughs> right. stuff. You guys can survive too. All right, good. Rock and roll.